Hi everyone and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Anthony Pastore. So did you ever pull up to the gas pump and think to yourself, wow, that is so expensive and seems to have gone up overnight. How do the oil companies come up with these prices? Well, I asked myself the same question. I just asked myself last night as I was filling up my car. And I think it's something we all have in common, especially these days as gas prices continue to soar. So let's try and make sense of how gas is priced with my colleague from the Chief Investment Office, Jay Dobson. Jay, this is the topic du jour, and I'm imagining you're probably getting this question a lot. A lot. A lot, right. Anthony. Right, especially these days. Just as we start, the national average gas price right now, according to AAA, for regular gas is $4.48, and that's the yeah. average. So we're seeing it close to 6 bucks a gallon. I know we're going to get into more of that in a moment. But let me ask you, before we get into the specifics of how it's priced, what can consumers, people like you and me, expect for gasoline and diesel prices for this summer? Because the summer driving season is really almost upon us. Yeah, it's a great question, Anthony, and uh, the punchline would be they're going higher. Mm. I mean, as you said. So Not what we wanted to hear. Yeah, gasoline prices now averaging, as you said, for regular, you know, about 440 diesel about 560 um, These are high prices, and so you'd say, well, why are prices so high? Inventories are low. Obviously, oil prices are high. That's an input into, um, you know, gasoline prices, um, but refining capacity is low. You've got the Russia-Ukraine war. That's taken some refined products product supply out of the global market. Um, there's a lot of reasons, but I would also point out, Anthony, and hopefully we'll talk a bit about, you know, sort of demand. Demand is high. And as mm. you said, we're moving into the summer driving vacation period. That's when demand tends to be higher. So we're already at that 440, 450 level as we sit here in mid-May and demand's going up. Is that so, surprising to you, Jay? I mean, historically, when prices go this high, does demand normally go down or are we just really pent up from not really getting out much over the last two years or so of pandemic-related closures, et cetera. Yeah, I think it's pent-up demand, mm. Anthony. I really do. I mean, historically, when you got to that, you know, sort of 4 four fifty. I mean, 4 dollars we've never seen these prices before. So it used to be a big threshold of 4 four fifty. You know, people would, you know, stop driving or drive less. Um, we're not seeing that right. now. And obviously, you can't say that universally. You know, sadly, you know, gasoline is one of those really, really regressive costs. It's really, really harmful high prices for the people who could at least afford at least. Mm -hmm. um, so there definitely will be some out of necessity that make that choice. But I would say for people who actually have the means, yeah, we're not seeing sort of demand change right. as much as we would expect. And obviously, we'll have to observe it over the summertime. But our hypothesis is demand will prove to be stronger than prices might otherwise indicate. And hence, that'll drive prices higher. Right. And right. Exactly. That's typical economics 101, right? Yeah. Supply and demand. So let me ask you, then let's take a step back. Because the reason that I wanted to get you to sit down with us today is let's talk about that relationship between mm -hmm the price of oil, a barrel of oil, unrefined, et cetera, to what we're actually paying at the pump. So how is that determined? Yeah, it's really interesting. The U.S. Energy Information Administration has a great graphic on this. And when you look at it, you can say somewhere between 55 and 60 percent of the price of gasoline is due to oil. Then you have another 20-ish percent, which is the refining of that oil. You got about 12 percent in taxes. You've got another 12 percent in, in retail sort of marketing and, and distribution. Um, now, I think what's a little dangerous there is... You know, people might immediately say, well, okay, 440 times 12%, that's 50 cents. Why don't those guys give up their profit margin? Well, you know, you're paying for gas stations. You're paying for employees. You're paying for a lot of stuff. I'd say if we really break it down, you know, the average retail profit margin in a, ga a, ga a gallon of gasoline is probably a dime, mm. 15 cents. So even if you gave them no profit, you know, I, I would argue there's there's not a lot of margin in there to give. Obviously, you know, several states have been talking about cutting those taxes. You know, I would argue this is a supply demand issue right now. Um, the last thing we need to be doing is sort of in sort of uh, encouraging demand by, you know, artificially cutting price or cutting taxes. Right. But prices are high right now, and, and that's how, you know, sort of a gallon of gas, the price of it breaks down. Diesel's very similar. It's a little bit lower oil cost in there, a little higher refining cost, but very similar. And supply doesn't seem to be the issue here. And, and, and interestingly, you know, we look at, and if obviously when the Russia-Ukraine war first broke out, we were expecting, and you uh, were expecting the price of a barrel of oil to go up. It makes sense. 
But we have seen those prices fluctuate. Jumped up to $130 a barrel a couple of weeks ago. Then it was kind of hovering around 100 bucks a barrel last week. But the prices at the pump kept going up. And so I know I've had questions from friends of mine. I'm sure you get this. Why does that not directly correlate? If the price goes down when I'm buying a barrel of oil on, on the market, why does the price not go down at the gas pump that I, you and I are paying? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question, and I think the, the Federal Reserve of Dallas did a really, really good study on this. You know, part of it was probably prompted by a number of politicians that have been sort of saying, wow, there's price gouging. Um, and their analysis said, yes, they do tend to go down a little more slowly, but they posited, they said, you know, best we can do is sort of make some educated guesses. They said, hey, People probably shop around a little less as prices are going down. They said, you know, you tend to have, you know, sort of uh, the implications of people, you know, driving a little bit more uh, as those prices. So as prices start to roll over, uh, you don't tend to see. So there, there really wasn't a great explanation for it. Mm. The, the one that seemed to make the most sense to me, quite frankly, was some of these retailers that probably lost a little money on the way up, you know, probably are trying to recoup a little bit of that profit. But, you know, again, that's the 10 to 15 cent level in that profit margin. So it's not a, a, not a, big, not a big piece. But mm. uh, I, I did think the Dallas Federal Reserve Reserve did a nice job trying to explain that. Yeah, at least they're at least they're trying yeah, because they yeah, know yeah. that people are asking the question. Exactly. Well, and again, their conclusion was, you know, there's no real evidence that mm. there's price gouging in here, which okay. is again what all of us are paying attention to, and the media carries some politician talking about that. You know, their conclusion was there really is no evidence of price gouging. Right. So we, you know, we we know that gasoline and diesel inventories are a little bit low. Yeah. Um, but how will demand because we talk about supply and demand, obviously. How do you think demand, then, is going to impact prices over, I don't know, the next several months or so, especially as we're looking through the summer? Yeah, well, you know, we have to frame this a little bit, Anthony. So the supply issue, as we said, we've got the Russia-Ukraine war right now. Um, that has impacted supply. You know, Russia was a reasonably large exporter of refined products. Their oil exports have remained high, but their refined product uh, exports have gone down. So the supply globally is negatively impacted. Mm -hmm. What's interesting, though, is demand has been impacted, too. You know, we've been watching China with their COVID, uh, zero COVID, COVID policy. You know, they're, they're locking down in some cities. So you've seen demand down. So it's amazing to me when you say, well, we've had some refined product, you know, decline in, in, in sort of inventory, but you also have China demand down. You know, we still have pretty tight supply demand. So in that... And I would argue with demand rising seasonally, it's going to drive prices higher. Mm. You know, summer is the time, particularly here in the U.S., but you can see this in Europe as well, where people get out. They have their vacations. They're getting on a plane. They're getting in their car. And that drives up demand seasonally. And, you know, the only other thing I'd say, which, you know, we'll all lose, we generally lose sleep over sort of the weather in the summertime. But, you know, usually you have, you know, strategic petroleum reserve that you can release if we have bad weather. If we end up with some hurricanes, for example, that you know shut down some oil capacity in the Gulf. Um, it, it'll be it'll be a little hard to catch up, and you could see right. you could see some real price spikes as a matter of just weather beyond the demand impacts we're talking about. People going on vacation, right? And the Biden administration just released some of that strategic petroleum reserve, didn't they? So how how did that, or is it impacting prices at all? You know, like all of these questions, it's a yes, but. Mm. So, yes, it helps. But they're not releasing gasoline and diesel. They're releasing oil. So what you need to get all gas prices down is we need another barrel of oil and we need refining capacity to refine that right, barrel right. of oil. So you need both of those. So they've taken the first step. You know, it's a good first step. It doesn't really move the needle. Um, but what you can see is by releasing, they've announced about 180 million barrels over a six-month period ending in October, so about a million barrels a day. Um, they're going to have to refill that. So what you've essentially done is you've moved some demand risk out into 2023 rather than in 2022. Um, it does inform me that oil prices probably remain high for a sustained period of time, sort of excluding recession and gasoline prices, though it's probably not the message all of our viewers want to hear. 
you know, remain high for an extended period of time too. Right. Yeah. Everybody wants to hear you say, yes, the prices are going to go down starting today. <laughs> exactly. Which is not the case. And yeah, let's not. not forget, as we say, we're all looking at how much inflation is impacting the economy. And we can't ignore the fact that higher gas prices, higher oil prices are also impacting the goods that we receive and the amount of money it costs for a truck to get from one point uh, from point A to point B. And the goods on that truck have to be priced higher. So we're paying higher, not just for the gas that we're putting in our cars, but for the goods that we're receiving that are being shipped. So it's, it's, it's a it's all over. It's a huge issue, Anthony. I mean, we all feel gasoline prices at the pump because we fill, but I don't think many of us really appreciate, you know, diesel is sort of really the lifeblood of the global economy. Think trains, trucks, as you said, your Amazon deliveries, whatever it is, that is really, and, you know, as we were talking before the show, you know, historically diesel prices have been below gasoline. Now they're a dollar twenty above um, and there's real inventory shortages. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, 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 prices here could go materially higher if demand doesn't start getting controlled. And again, you know, what are we all going to order less from Amazon? What are we Probably gonna, not. Yeah, that, right. that's, that's the real issue. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very, a very, very uh, unique time right now. Yeah, it's weird to hear diesel prices being so much higher than regular gas. Yeah. As a kid, we were talking about this. Uh, I remember everybody buying diesel cars because they said, no, diesel is so much less expensive. Yeah. How much has changed in, uh, in a couple of years, a couple of decades, really. Yeah. Um, so before I, we can let you go, Jay, um, any advice to drivers? Let's talk to drivers. Yeah. How do they manage some of this price risk? As we know, as you said, prices will continue to rise, so we can just expect that that's the case. How can we try to mitigate some of that? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. This is the, probably the question I like answering the most because we can't control prices. I would argue the oil companies and, and gasoline refiners can't control prices. So what can we actually do? You know, I would say first, shop around. You know, what we do know is gasoline's a commodity. We can go search around and, and find the best prices. There's lots of apps out there to help you do that in the world of, of technology. Mm -hmm. You know, the second thing, drive a little slower. I just did this recently on a two-hour drive, and instead of driving some, you know, faster pace than I should be, uh, I slowed it down to 55 miles an hour, and I got a lot better gas mileage. That's cool and to hear that. I, I think that is... You know, inflate your tires. Make sure that those are appropriately uh, inflated because that'll help your gas mileage. And then one that you wouldn't expect, and it's more like a hedge rather than what we can do about it. But, you know, I used to think about this in, you know, sort of utilities, but you can do the same thing in gasoline. You know, own the stock of the refiner. You know, own oil companies. You know, when you try and think about how am I going to insulate myself, sometimes there isn't a great way to insulate it. And so we have to just go out and own in our investment portfolio, um, you know, refiners, oil companies, energy equities, where we remain overweight um, as a way to sort of insure yourself against some of these risks. Good advice. Pay more at the pump, but make more in your portfolio. Exactly. Great. Jay, this is so helpful. Uh, not obviously the best news, yep. knowing that we're all going to have to pay a little bit more this summer, but at least we can get a better understanding of why. So thanks for dropping by, Jay. Good to see you. Thanks, Anthony. I appreciate the time. Always a pleasure. And for more information from Jay and the rest of the Chief Investment Office, visit our website at ubs.com forward slash views and follow us on social media, all the platforms, including LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Plus, check out all our past UBS trending episodes on demand. And as always, if you have any questions about your portfolio, make sure to speak with a financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. We hope you have a great day and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll speak with you soon.